Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another segment of Chicago Lawyer Magazine's Inside Out, where we explore different aspects of the law with our unique husband and wife team. The inside perspective comes from David Sussler. He is an Associate General Counsel at National Material LP. The outside perspective from Tina Martini. She is a partner at DLA Piper. I'm your host, Andy Shaw, President and CEO of the Better Government Association. I'm doing this in exchange for legal services. <laughs> Just kidding, these are my friends, and it's my pleasure to host a segment. <laughs> Happy holidays, this is our year-end segment, and so it's gonna be a little more touchy-feely than usual. We're going to look at some personal aspects of David and Tina's backgrounds, as opposed to specific uh, aspects of the law. And let me start by saying, this has been three and a half years of doing these segments. I'm relatively new to the game, only a few months. So why don't you share a little bit about yourselves personally, uh, maybe a minute each on where you grew up and what people might think they'd like to know about you, uh, in either order. Sure. first. Ladies first. Sure. Um, so I grew up in the northern suburbs of Chicago. I was born and raised in Highland Park. I have a father and three brothers. Um, my mother passed away when I was in high school. I come from a family of engineers and scientists. I'm the only lawyer in the family and um, I have a great family. I, I you know, really think that you know, the family is incredibly important and they were extraordinarily important to me, especially after my mom died. I got a lot of support from my father and my brothers. Law school was really not part of the plan. It was something I just sort of fell into on a dare. My ex-boyfriend dared me to take the LSAT and do better than him, and I did, and I got into Northwestern and Law School. that's why you ended up with David. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many of these guys want to be beaten on the LSAT by a girl. So yeah, so I mean, I had a, a full uh, career planned out as an engineer and uh, decided to go to law school instead. Yeah, I, I don't think you would hear too many of those kinds of stories. I'll bet you yours is a little more of a traditional path into the law, David. Um, and you grew up, though, in Western well, Illinois. I grew you? up in Central Illinois, Central, okay. in Decatur, Illinois, okay. um, and I actually grew up in a family of lawyers. Oh, okay. um, most directly, uh, you know, my father was a general practitioner in Decatur, and he did a lot of litigation. And so, you know, growing up around the dinnertime conversations were often about his cases, and he would present the facts of the cases and ask, it was my sister and I, uh, and my mom and he would ask tell us the facts and ask us what we thought about it and you know he, through that of course he was teaching us ethics right from wrong decision making logic uh, but I was just fascinated by uh, all of his stories and I decided somewhere as, as, a, as a young kid I want to do what my dad does and, and especially the personal injury stories he would tell, I said, I, I want to do that. Well, no one asked me that question, but what I'm going to tell you is one thing. I always thought I was going to be a lawyer. Yeah. And of course, it never worked out that way, which is probably good for people who need good lawyers. But in any event, uh, you know, that seemed like an attractive profession to me. So let me ask you um, the, a logical question for you, because I think you almost answered it without mm -hmm. being asked. If you weren't a lawyer, you'd be an engineer, or you don't know for sure? Well, there are a few things that I considered doing. Um, being an engineer was one. Being a pharmacist was another, because my father's a pharmacist, um, and my mother was a pharmacist as well. Um, I also had played with around with the idea of being a reporter, kind of like you. You were my inspiration, I, Andy. I played, a, I played around with being a reporter, too. The only good part was it actually paid. And I also, when I was really young, my, my father almost played professional baseball. So I was really into sports growing up and played baseball. I had my first baseball mitt when I was eight. So um, like my father, I was a pitcher and I had a pretty good curveball. So I was thinking for a while, maybe I could be the first woman professional baseball player. And my youngest daughter throws uh, about an 80 mile an hour uh, perfect strike fastball and was, was limited by the same gender issues. So she ended up playing soccer. A lot of similarities that you don't find out until you sit down for these kinds of conversations. Yeah, so true. you could have been a drug dealer, but you decided not to go <laughs> and now you're alike. And, and what did, so it sounds to me like you were kind of uh, hardwired to be a lawyer, but if it hadn't come out that way, what else might you have been? Were you gonna be a hockey player? Uh, no. <laughs> um, 
though I did skate a little bit when I was younger and I convinced my parents to buy me a nice set of Bauer hockey skates. I wore them once and I don't think I've skated since. <laughs> but, you know, that's always a tough question for me because I only ever wanted to be a lawyer. But the one other thing that I ever seriously considered um, and came back to me from time to time as I was growing up was being a rabbi. Uh, and, that, and I found out when I was a young adult that my father had actually considered becoming a rabbi when he was younger too. Um, but I think ultimately I chose the right course. You know, at the risk of, of stepping too far on a limb here, I would think that in terms of the, the kind of precepts of the rabbinical teachings and the concerns with ethics and justice and all those things, there are a lot more similarities than one might think. Good news is you don't have to wear a yarmulke at work now. That's true. Okay, so let me, the last question in this touchy-feely segment, it sounds like a game show. Right? I know both of you really. What is one thing that no one, I should, you can't really ask this because you wouldn't answer it. But what's something that people wouldn't know about you that you can share without disclosing something that will get you sued or in big trouble? Why don't you start with that? Well, um, I, I know I, I wrote in the printed column, I, I talked about being uh, winning an archery tournament at camp when I was a little kid, which I just remembered when I was thinking about writing it, but in thinking about today, another thing is, people might not know, I'm a lifelong Star Trek fan. And when I was in grade school is when the original Star Trek series was running on TV and we used to play Star Trek on the jungle gyms during recess. And I, of course, was always uh, Mr. Spock. Well, I bet you that's something that not a lot of people know outside of your uh, neighborhood and family and circle. You yes. are young in Decatur. <laughs> Tina? So, um, well, I actually mentioned this in the printed column, but I'm happy to embellish as you see, see fit, Andy. Uh, when I was a little girl, in addition to having my baseball mitt that I was carrying around at age eight, I also had a tape recorder with a microphone that I walked around with, and I was Tina the reporter. So I have all these tapes at home from over, you know, from 35 years ago of when I was a reporter. I used to be the reporter by day and the disc jockey by night. So I would mix it in with music and stuff too, but I really thought I wanted to be a reporter. And so I walked around with this tape recorder for several years. Your role model had to be Lois Lane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I figured there had to be something there because you guys both like doing this uh, video gig which actually is a fun thing to do. You know, video is a fun, it's, whether you're doing it as a, uh, as a hobby or, or something for a magazine or something to enhance your profession, it's, it is fun. If you, communication is fun. I mean, you do a lot of it as lawyers. And, uh, but I think, as, okay, so you couldn't be a baseball player, you're not a DJ, you didn't turn out to be an engineer, you don't dispense drugs. <laughs> it sounds to me like you, on balance, are pretty happy it ended up being the law. Yes, I am, very much so. Um, and I do think there are actually a lot of similarities because it's all about communication, right? So whether it's journalism or even engineering, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of similarities between engineering and law. And as much as I think law is a very sort of precise form of communication with words, whereas engineering is a precise form of communication with numbers. So I do think that there's actually quite a bit of alignment with my three top choices, which were engineering, law, and journalism, so. And, and you probably are satisfied that you made the choice you did. For one thing, you can have Friday night dinner with Tina at that <laughs> lovely restaurant in Evanston where many people have time, instead of having to get ready for services. Uh, well, true. Um, uh, unless I want to go to Friday night services. Um, <laughs> well, but that no. breaks the dinner day, unless yeah. you have a fast dinner. No, but, it, but yeah, I, I definitely am suited to being a lawyer. And, you know, as you said earlier, there is, there's definitely overlap. Um, I mean, I, my religion was always very important to me. And, of course, it's grounded in ethics and morals and making a difference in the world as it's similar to being a lawyer. Uh, and that was always the message I got from my parents growing up. And so I get to do that. Okay, well, we're going to end this segment, and I'll tell people that they should come back for another touchy-feely segment that's going to follow, <laughs> that we'll call that the bonus round. But for now, David and Tina, thanks much. Um, hope you've enjoyed a little more of an inside look at uh, our Inside Out folks than you normally get. Uh, we gave you a holiday break from listening to Aspects of the Law to getting to know uh, Tina and David a little better, which is probably a good thing because having spent a lot of my pre-BGA years on television, you do find that the people who watch you and follow you, uh, and they have their following here, um, do want to know more about you. It's just human nature. And so uh, hopefully you've gotten to see a little bit more of 
the human side of Tina Martini and David Sussler, and that's always a good thing. Um, you're not going to see too much more of my human side because it's really scary. <laughs> anyway, this has been Chicago Lawyer Magazine's Inside Out. I'm Andy Shaw. Thank you for watching this segment, and as I said, tune in in a couple or three weeks for a bonus segment. Happy Holidays.